A couple of years ago, a Dutch nurse was convicted for having killed her patients, at least some of them. It turns out it seems to be the case that during her shifts, the number of deaths was surprisingly and unexpectedly high. And this was written for suspicion. During the legal case against the nurse, a statistician was called in, a mathematician. And he computed a probability. He said that something like this could only happen with a probability of one in 342 million. One in 342 million. And even if you're bad at numbers, you know this is very small. The court embraced this number, and the nurse was found guilty. In the court of appeal that followed, I acted as an expert witness for the defense. I claimed that this number of one in 342 million did not make any sense whatsoever. It was based on a mathematical model which was inappropriate, which was too simple, and which was simply not useful for the situation. And as such, the number was not meaningful either. This was not acknowledged by the court again, and she was found guilty for the second time. But was she guilty? I'll tell you later. Cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> Mathematics is extremely important in our lives. Although you may not always be aware of this. Not much of modern technology will survive without mathematics. For instance, when you do a Google search, you apply a piece of very difficult, beautiful, elegant, deep mathematics. Without mathematics, no Google. And mathematics works so well in, say, theoretical physics, that this should perhaps even puzzle us. But this does not mean that everything in the world can be described in a mathematical way, in a meaningful way. Outcomes of models, of mathematical models, outcomes of computation, should always be treated with care, with a lot of care. Models always simplify the situation. This does not mean that all models are lies, but it means that we have to be extremely careful. Do these numbers relate to the truth? Let me give you three examples. We, the Dutch, are known for our struggle against the water, and we build dikes. And we have to decide how high the dikes are going to be. So a couple of years, it was announced that the dikes are so high that a catastrophe, a, a, a big flood, was only to be expected once every 10,000 years. Well, that sounded pretty reassuring. But is the number meaningful? Does it mean anything? Can we build a model? Because this was the result of a model. Can we build a model such that these numbers can be computed in a meaningful way? And the answer is no, this is not possible. Second example. Also, a couple of weeks ago, maybe you've heard this, um, we were told that newborn children in the Netherlands have a life expectancy of 100 years. That sounds nice, maybe, or maybe not. I'm not sure, I haven't been there. Tomorrow, I will be exactly halfway, but this is a side issue, <laughs> but true. <laughs> so how do we know this? How do we know? I mean, how do we know that this number makes sense into the far future? How do we know that not all sorts of stupid things will happen? New diseases, bacteria, viruses, I don't know what. We simply don't know. So I don't think it makes sense to make this claim whatsoever. Third example. Maybe you are familiar with, in English it is called, the Netherlands Bureau of Economic Policy Analysis. Maybe you don't know what it is, but you do know, it's the CPB, the Centraal Plan Bureau. Around every election, we see this circus coming up again. What do they do? They compute the effect of the various political programs. And then we hear, for instance, that if this or that measurement is actually applied, the number of unemployed people will go down by 50,000. Have you ever asked yourself how they come up with that number? And is it reasonable? Well, I'll tell you how they come up with that number. What they do is they feed it into a mathematical model. They model our economy. But of course, the predictions are always wrong. 
and they admit so much themselves. Of course they're wrong. We cannot model our economy in a reasonable way. Many factors play a role. It is simply too complex. So not everything can be modeled in a reasonable way. And I insist that in the interpretation of these things, we need wisdom. Right? Besides mathematics, we need wisdom. We have to interpret all the results with care. We have to understand, we have to see whether or not the model makes any sense whatsoever. It would be nice if there were some God-given number telling how, the, how high the dike should be, or how long we live, or what we should do with our economy. But this is not possible. Models that, that fit in the past do not necessarily fit in the future, because the future is simply too complex. Now you can ask yourself, is this a problem? I think it is. I think it is a problem if we are told truths that are not truth. I think it is a problem if we get reassuring information which is misleading, and which is used, make no mistake, which is used by our politicians for policy making. It is a problem because we feel that they are based on wrong numbers. It, it, it makes the gap between politics and us even larger. And the moment a politician refers to science or to numbers, it seems that no discussion is possible at all. But it is not so easy to see which numbers are significant and which ones are not. Of course, we should use science. We have to use numbers. They're important. We should use them, but we should not worship them. But of course, we want certainties. We all want certainties. Uh, and we, we sort of embrace them, even if we know that they're sort of fake. Deep down inside, we know that they're fake. We ensure everything we can. Right? It makes us feel safe. But are we? I think we should stop publishing numbers that are meaningless. I think it is much better to accept the fact that the future is genuinely unpredictable, even in probabilistic terms. And on, on a personal level, on a personal level, I think that accepting living in a world full of uncertainties is a lot better than finding them. It is much better to admit that there are a lot of things we don't know, that we cannot control, than to simply call out random but meaningless numbers. I believe that the world of certainties is a fake world. And I don't think we can be happy in a fake world because it does not relate to reality. And this brings me to maybe the main point I want to make. Relation to reality. What does that mean? I think that this is the ground for almost all, even world religions, relation to reality. We have to understand, we have to relate ourselves to what's happening in the world, and we have to find a way to put things into place. We have to understand a way, we have to find a way to actually give science a place, to give numbers a place in our worldview. And thinking about these issues is very important because it will, it will lead you, it will force you to actually make, construct, find your own philosophy of life. And of course, we have to determine the heights of the dikes, of course, right, of course. Of course, we have to say something about our economy, we have to do something. But let's do this without false pretensions. Let's put our arrogance aside and let us try to live in a world that is real and that is not fake. Coming back to the nurse. I told you, the nurse was even found guilty in the Court of Appeal. This was because the judges did not realize that the numbers that were used in the trial against the nurse were just that, numbers from a model. I tried to convince them that the models were not appropriate and therefore the numbers meaningless. After seven years, after seven years imprisonment, finally the nurse was set free as not guilty. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>